So I kind of want to take you back a little bit to when you were in the bow seat in, in 2016, because, um, and, and talk about your race. I've got some pictures of your race in Rio, but um, yeah. I, I think, first of all, um, you came into Rio on, uh, after having a really great result in, um, uh, in Lucerne. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a picture of you, the Dutch eight, yeah. the Germans, the British, the Americans. Yeah. So um, I guess you must have been thinking we can win a gold medal after that result. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. It was a great. It was a great race. It was actually, I think, my best race in the eight we had in the two years I was in that eight. So uh, yeah, it, it it felt it felt really good. Just from the start uh, of the of the World Cup in the heats uh, until the final, it, it it just you feel connected and there's sometimes when you're in the bow seat and you and you're not able to give uh, the full power, yeah. uh, but you're not really connected to the to the stroke or uh, it, it doesn't feel as a as a whole and and this race it just was from from. From the first stroke till the, till the finish line was was really connected and full power and uh, yeah, a really good race. So so let let's talk about the Olympics. I mean, you must have gone there with the expectation you could be Olympic champions. Yeah, actually, uh, the expectations were were raised by the Dutch media because they also saw our, uh, our victory in Lucerne and they and they thought maybe we were the first uh, A to to have the or the, the second A to win the gold medal after the 69 crew and they just interviewed a lot of <laughs> the stroke Nico rings from the 69 crew are they able to do it and uh, maybe we're going to have a, a new Olympic uh, champion after 696 uh, so yeah we we I think we had the expectation and the focus but it wasn't there at the uh, at the Rio Olympics so just just to talk about that race there's a picture of you off the start time i think that's you up in the bow seat um how was the how was the final feeling you know when you went through the first uh 500 meters um yeah it was it was um difficult because we were already so far behind i never had the the feeling we could catch the uh, the uh, uh, Great Britain eight, so I think the I think that was that was already really difficult at thousand meters or uh, five hundred meters. So did the boat just feel different, or was the problem with the water? You talked about feeling really connected in Lucerne. It was that yeah. feeling not the same. No, that was not the same. I think we did the best we could at that moment, but. Um, it wasn't the same as in Lucerne. Well, I guess that's a pick. That's you up in the bows, isn't it? Just yeah. um, in the third five hundred, moving through New Zealand and, um, yeah. and and quite close with Germany. Yeah. So uh, I, actually, uh, I didn't look anymore after um, after the five hundred meter mark, and suddenly the the cox uh, Peter Wilson he said uh, we were in second position. We're like, oh shit, we could <laughs> still get the silver medal, and then, uh, yeah, after a thousand meters, it was just separated. The first three and the uh, and the last three were really far from each other, so we weren't we weren't really uh, really uh, uh, countered by uh, New Zealand or America for the third place, and we re and we didn't really attack the British, so it was uh, us and the German to get for the silver medal and. Unfortunately, we were in bronze. So, you know, um, that was your first Olympic medal. So, you know, in a way, I know partly about this because if you talk to the British eight in 2012, they were very disappointed that they won bronze. They kind of thought they could beat the Germans. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, it was quite a strange feeling. When I won a, a bronze medal um, in the Olympics, I was... I was ecstatic. I was extremely pleased. Uh, but what were you, what were your emotions with that result? Yeah, I I had the same. <laughs> the whole the whole crew, the whole eight was really disappointed because we had so such a high expectations after Lucerne, 
and uh, and then to lose the silver medal in the last 200 meters uh, I think of course I'm very proud of the uh, of the medal because uh, at least we have a medal and we have something uh, it's better than a fourth place or a fifth sixth place but uh, if you're if you're talking about uh, goals and 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 expectations, then it was a kind of a disappointment, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, um, did it take a bit of time for you to recover from? Um, did you think of, of stopping rowing after that, or um, you know, were you determined to carry on? No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that that hard uh, to make decisions. It, it it didn't it didn't. I just felt uh, I had I had enough. I was young enough to to continue rowing. So uh, and uh, I felt I could improve this uh, result. So that's what I was thinking after Rio. I, w I would continue, but so, uh, never talked about stopping. So um, we talked a little bit about the, um, the what you did in 2017. You took some time off, and then we talked about the quad in 2018, where you you were close in the final, but Cruise rode through you in the last 500 meters. Yeah. And then um, all of a sudden in 2019, I think uh, got a picture which yeah. um, is your quad in the Europeans at Lucerne. And, and that is a crazy picture because you are still the fastest boat on the water in the last 200 meters, but and you're still moving away from uh, Great Britain yeah. and Italy behind you. Yeah, this it was it was amazing. We were so focused on. Uh, so after after 2018, we we had to uh, think about how how we're going to plan, what we're going to do in the Netherlands, and uh, because the four, the Dutch four in 2018 didn't perform like they expected, and uh, so there were plans to go to get uh, into the eight. Or, and they wanted us to get into the eight as well. Oh. And so um, Ilko and uh, and our sports director and Mark and everyone, they were they were uh, in a lot of uh, what? How do you say uh, discussions? Discussions, yeah, a lot of discussions with each other about what to do and which priority we give to which boat uh, and. So at the end, the priority was given to the to the quad uh, over the over the eight, uh, which meant that um, uh, Ilko wanted Tona to join our group, and uh, it gave a lot of pressure to perform uh, as a priority boat because uh, we had to perform. Otherwise, maybe we should also get into the quad of any eight as well. Uh, so it I think it was a lot of pressure and a lot of uh focus to uh to get revenge on the uh on the italian crew and uh yeah i think this this was the ult ultimate moment in sport when you get that revenge and you just keep going uh and it felt really really good yeah so if if you had to maybe give the secret if somebody uh, a young rower was asking you for the secret of how to make a quadruple move that quickly what what would you say to them yeah i think the description of um of uh of the guy a guy who asked the question was really well if, if it has to feel effortless and long uh and and you have to do you have, <laughs> it's a it sounds really silly when you say it like that but yeah you, you have to do it all together and uh and we no we we wrote we wrote a lot of uh and we wrote a lot in the quad just just um uh, in the winter as well uh and a lot of a lot of races against each other so the whole group of eight people again with the with the quad and the, the the double and the single and the spare we did a lot of with races with two quads next to each other and uh, we really competed with each other to go to get into the best quad positions and uh i think that helped a lot to have to find the the right connection with the guys because steph for example he was in the quad in 2018 stefan Breunink, and uh and he he 
is not a he's a world class athlete. He showed he showed this year in the single that he that he is a world class athlete in the single skull. So he wasn't it, it, it wasn't that he's not good enough for the quad. It's just uh, we had a better combination with Tony maybe, uh, and he showed uh, that he has a lot of improvement and a, and a lot of skill in the in the single quad in the single skull. Yeah. Yeah. So I know we, we, we talked a bit about your result in um, uh, Rotterdam, which was a very windy regatta, and um, it wasn't uh, maybe reflective of, of what your pace was. But then you came to the World Championships. You had a fantastic semi-final, um, so you must have felt that you were good. Um, and I'm going to take you to the... You're sitting on the start of your World Championship final. There you are up on the left of the picture in the bows. Um, and um, how nervous are you feeling at this point? Are you are you uh, expecting another great performance? What what are your nerves like? Yeah, um, I think a good question. I think you're always nervous when you're at the start. Just uh, the 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 silence before the light turns green, and uh, uh, you don't know what to expect, but. I think we we felt really great during the whole tournament. Uh, in in trainings, we had we had uh, fast times and at shorter pieces, and uh, we performed well in the heats, performed well in the semis. So uh, we felt quite confident in the final. Uh, but still, you have to do it. Uh, it's I, I I don't think it's really um, nervousness, but more. The, the nerves you need to get into the right focus. So off the start, you're not in first place. I think there are maybe some other boats ahead of you. Germany is up there. Maybe Poland's ahead of you. Italy's ahead of you in the first um, first part of the race. So was that is that how you go off, just um, to be loose and controlled and not worry too much where you are in the first quarter? Yeah, I, I don't know if that's really our thing so to say uh to get to get behind in the first 500 meters but uh because we we showed i think in uh i think in the europe european championships where were we in front at the 500 like maybe we were in front but the the german crew was fast uh fast at the start and the polish and the Itali italians are also fast at the start so maybe we weren't as fast as we were in the semi or in Europeans, but mm -hmm. we felt really good in a good rhythm, and I, I wasn't uh, nervous at that point. I just thought maybe we look at how it's it, at thousand meters, and then we can see if we're uh, doing well or not. So, um, in in your boat. Can, who, who makes the calls? Who decides? Um, who says things during the race? Abba. Ah, can you hear him? Yeah. Yeah. And what, what kind of calls would Abba make in, in this race? Just uh, what we talk. <laughs> it's a good shot of him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, he, uh, we, we, this is our joke in the crew because um, uh, Dirk Simon al always likes uh, to have a, a really relaxed face uh, and Ab is the only one uh, in the crew who knows he's doing like or, or like he is now with his mouth open. <laughs> so we really joke about him. <laughs> in yeah, that yeah, yeah. He jokes about himself as well, so it's, it's funny. So what, what what calls does does Arba make during the during the race? Is it is it a technical focus or is it uh, to move the boat on um, to maybe increase the pressure or something like that? The rating. What what kind of calls do you have? Yeah, we don't have that much technical calls. I think we 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 have some arrangements with each other. If 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 someone feels uh something differently and uh then then there is a, a standard call for that so it, it, i don't know uh if you feel it's uh, it's uh, it's getting more heavy in the front load uh stroke then uh, so we should stick more together or, and then we have a call for it I, I don't know exactly what what the calls are actually 
but yeah, uh, uh, yeah mostly he just co he gives the call for the race plan we we make with each other in front of the race yeah so you're, you're coming into i mean that's an amazing margin just um moving clear of italy and uh at the finish i mean it's a sensational result because the the field is very spread out but again you know was that uh, as good a row at, as at lucerne yeah i think i think i think it was i think uh in europeans it was because it, because it was the first time we were really more uh focused on uh on just <laughs> continue 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 and we did the same here but uh, i think uh yeah uh nothing is for free so uh the the polish crews and the italian crews who are still coming and we just uh it's over until you're uh, across the finish line yeah and then crossing the finish line i think there's a shot you can really just see it your arm goes straight in the air yeah in, in celebration yeah yeah yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say about it, actually. It's just, uh, yeah, really happy. It never happened before. Yeah. And uh, you can celebrate this uh, amazing Dutch tradition of, of people swimming out to the boats, which yeah. is unusual if you're not from Holland. Yeah, yeah I can imagine, yeah. In the... Uh, like the, the, the Dutch... Uh, there's a... There's a um, a rowing uh, competition in the Netherlands. It's uh, like uh, the boat race uh, in uh, in in Great Britain. Uh, only then, between the the universities from the big cities in the Netherlands, uh, it's called the Varsity, and uh, you row in the in the Cox Four. Uh, the heats in two k, and the final is three uh, k with a with a slight turn in it. And uh, yeah, so you have all these. Uh, great athletes, uh, you have to be a student to compete uh, yeah. in all the different uh, clubs in the Netherlands and it's just it's, uh, a tradition, I don't know where it comes from but it just it is a tradition during that uh, competition that uh, the, the whole club of the winning crew uh, swims out with only a tie on uh, uh, to, the, to the winning crew and uh, to celebrate the, the victory and it's 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 so amazing to uh to live in that moment because then the first time i i've wrote it for four times and um yeah to, to have to have such a celebration at the, because your emotions are at the highest that when you cross the finish line and to celebrate yeah. in that moment with the with the people from your own club and in this case the people from your country uh also from your club and your uh your your relatives it's really special uh and yeah it's, it's just uh i think it's a beautiful tradition actually and uh, yeah i really i really enjoyed that they were they were swimming to us you know, with so many of them uh it's, it's really really cool yeah it's um what did it feel like because you've been in you know the world champion um World Championships for many years, and then this was the first time that you won a gold medal. How, how did how did you know when you had time to think about it, or what, what did it feel like to you? You know, you finally had won a gold medal. Yeah, that was it was so strange because you you thinking about just what you said. It was like with such a margin that you're thinking about what what I, what I, did I do wrong in the last year? So <laughs> what did we do differently? It's just it just. Yeah, when it when it clicks that way, and it, and it's it's such a great team to be in, and uh, such a team effort uh, that it felt so fluidly and so loose and so easy that it, that it just it feels so great to finally uh, achieve the goal that you're always uh, working for, also in the past years, and mm. uh, it feels so strange to finally achieve that but it also feels really satisfying and uh, really good yeah so uh, from from the outside it almost looks as though your crew has taken the sort of the quadruple sculling to uh, to another level um i'm thinking of when the kiwi pair the new zealand pair did that amazing time of 608 but you know how much they dominated the field by 
yeah. I think your time, the times that you did in Lucerne and at the Worlds were, were at the top of the percentage times, the prognostic times for, um, you know, across all the crews. Um, do you feel like you're doing something special in the sport? I did. I, at the moment, like in, in the moment when we were rowing, it didn't feel like it, but when you're when you're back home or uh, I think um, for me the moment was uh, on uh, on the Saturday night and the Sunday night uh, and the Sunday uh, when I watched the other races at, uh, at Leeds that um, I had uh, um, I had a lot of people coming towards me and just uh, congratulating me with, yeah. uh, with the result and uh, showing a lot of respect and it was really weird to notice like uh whoa they they know who i am and they know uh, <laughs> uh just uh, when when you're one of one of the the one of the rowers just from uh when you're not when you didn't perform that what we did then you're just one of one of the crew uh who, crews who was out there and they don't know you in person maybe they know you in person because they were in the quad beside yeah. you or uh but it was it, it felt the, what people coming towards me it felt really special just to say well maybe we've done something special and maybe it was uh more than uh, than we think yeah, yeah. and um, i'm just thinking about we, we you know we'll draw things to a close shortly um uh, but um just in terms of the way that you're training from now going going forward, do you think you'll have any summer racing at all? You know, this is the season where you would be doing shorter, more intensive pieces. Do you think, uh, has that opportunity gone or will you do some races in singles or doubles at, at the 2K intensity? Well, uh, we hope that the uh, Europeans will continue and we will show at the europeans if if it's if it's still on uh and we're just training to to get there uh, to be there at, the, at our best so uh we just started the season like we was we we started every season just with more uh, endurance and more weights and then uh the shorter pieces will come i think in uh in about a month because it's half october or uh, maybe in august or september but uh they will come if you were you're not as prepared as you were last year but uh, because you have a shorter period to prepare for but uh you don't lose anything in uh everything in the in the, in two months that we did yeah. and, and we how did. how confident are you that the tokyo olympics will happen in 2021 i'm not confidence but um i'm just hoping for the best i, I think uh, there's a uh, if you see that a lot of sport competitions are continuing now in uh, football in uh, in other sports disciplines yeah. that that i have good hopes that they will continue last year but yeah it, it's just it, it doesn't help to think about it if it will continue or not you know yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're being insecure about it or in doubt about it, then I don't think you can fully focus on what you're doing at the moment. So uh, I enjoy training at the moment with the guys. I enjoy uh, the life I have now at the moment, and um, I hope it will continue. It will. It will be such a shame if it if it will be cancelled or yeah. I I. I can't think about that uh and we'll see what happens you know yeah uh, yeah that's the only thing we can do yeah well i would love to see a dutch quadruple skull going as fast as it did last year and and you know seeing if any of the world can can catch it or you know yeah. can keep up that would be a, a wonderful thing to see in uh um, yeah in the olympics I, I think i remember watching an, an italian quad in 1988 in the seoul olympics i think they were a long way out in front um at, you know a different speed it does happen every so often in rowing but it's it's great to have had the chance to talk with you and uh yeah. understand a little bit about your psychology and um maybe people can work out why uh, a, a journalist called you an enigma yeah um, <laughs> 
Um, and what do you think? Yeah, I, I can see you you have um I think you've you've warmed up more through the interview, but you have some nice expressions. You have a lovely smile on your face. So uh it's it's not so difficult really. I think it's just an it's just your preference is introversion. So <laughs> yeah, it's natural. Yeah. I think you're a socially skilled introvert. <laughs> Very good. So, Dirk, I will leave you for this afternoon and uh, we'll end the live broadcast there and I'll say thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me.